Good morning, everyone. And I'm pleased to welcome all of you to the National Symposium as glaucoma begins to take center stage, not only in India and across the world. I think there is a significant importance that's going to be attached to this topic now and in the future. The topic of my talk today is clinical and public health translational elements of glaucoma and really the importance of glaucoma in India. I'm going to take you through a clinical translational part of one of the studies that we did and then take you through the public health translational part and give you an example of what possibly we might think of doing in this country to reach out to the 11.2 million people that have glaucoma. So the Central India Eye and Medical Study was a population-based study that we did in rural Central India. And the total population that was studied was 4,711 subjects with a mean age of 49.5 years. And that gives you an idea of where Nagpur is, right in the center of India. All patients underwent a detailed eye evaluation, including fundus photography, Heidelberg retina tomography. And in addition, the systemic blood parameters were tested, which included glycosylated hemoglobin, blood sugar, urea, creatinine, and blood lipids. To give you an example of clinical translational research, the optic disc size was found to be 2.25 square millimeters. So we were able to define a small optic disc as being 1.23 millimeters square or less, and a large optic disc as being 3.27 millimeters square. And the importance of the size of the optic disc in a community lies in the fact that large discs have large cups and may be suspected to have glaucoma and small discs have small cups and may be missed to have glaucoma. This is now common knowledge that I think all of us are aware about. The second clinical translational finding was the intraocular pressure, which as all of us know, continues to be an important hallmark of clinical assessment and several decisions are made taking this measurement into consideration. In our study, the mean intraocular pressure for central India population was found to be 13.6 millimeters of mercury. This gives us an indication of what may be considered normal and abnormal according to the current understanding of intraocular pressure. And through these measurements, we may define associations with optic disc morphometric parameters to tell us how sensitive they may be to intraocular pressure. The third clinical translational finding was that the central corneal thickness was found to be 514 microns. And the applination tonometer was built to measure intraocular pressure for a central corneal thickness of 520 microns. And the central corneal thickness in Caucasians is about 540 microns. So the impact of this finding is well evident. Now, moving on to what we found regarding the prevalence of glaucoma, we found that of the 4,711 4, subjects, we had accessible photographs for almost 97%. The mean age was 48.5 years. The mean refractive error was 0.06 diopters. And the mean axial length in this population was 22.64 millimeters. Glaucoma was detected in 193 eyes, that is 2.18% of 122 subjects. And open angle glaucoma was found in 108 subjects, and primary angle closure glaucoma was found in 14 subjects. The ratio of open angle glaucoma to angle closure glaucoma was 7.7 .7 is to 1 for Central India. The prevalence increased significantly with age, starting from 3.45% for 40 plus years and reaching to 7.50% for 60 plus years. And I always talk, when I talk in a hall like this, I say that if all of us were 60 years and above, then almost one in 10 would have glaucoma or would be strongly suspicious of glaucoma. And that's the public health impact of knowing the figures of age-related prevalence. When we looked at multivariate analysis to find what was it that angle closure glaucoma and open angle glaucoma we were related with, we find that age, intraocular pressure, disc hemorrhage, refractive error, anterior chamber depth, axial length, vertical cup disc ratio, all of these are important in multivariate correlations. When we looked at the prevalence patterns all across India, we found that the prevalence patterns tend to differ a little bit across the country. For example, in the Chennai glaucoma study, the urban population 
in the 40 plus age group had a prevalence of 3.51%, but in their rural group it was 1.62. In the rural group in central India it was 3.45%, which was a little bit akin to the urban population group. And these are the various other studies. They're all prominent studies that have been done across the country, but mainly concentrated in the south of India. So we have an idea that we have a prevalence of roughly about 3 to 4 percent across different regions of the country. And there are many factors that are involved in determining the prevalence that might differ a little bit in different populations and different subsets of populations. The ratio of open angle glaucoma to angle closure glaucoma continues to mystify us. And you can see here that the ratio was highest in central India in the rural community. But the ratio tends to be relatively moving towards uh, uh, the primary angle closure group from Chennai glaucoma study and then the Arvind and the Beijing eye study and the Singapore Malay study telling us that perhaps in South India, primary angle closure glaucoma, we need to be more suspicious and that it's more commonly seen. So on the basis of several population-based studies in India, it was calculated that there are 11.2 million people affected over the age of 40 years, with 6.48 million people suffering from POAG and 2.54 million from primary angle closure glaucoma. If we extrapolated the findings from Central India Eye and Medical Study, we have this data, which is very similar. That's 11.27 million, considering a population of India at 1.21 billion. And in age 50 plus year, years, it was 9.79 million. And 60 plus years, where the prevalence was 7.5%, it went on to 7.78 million. So in terms of public health translation, the problem of awareness and diagnosis is center stage. Not more than 10% have been diagnosed or are aware that they have glaucoma. 70% of the glaucoma is in the rural areas because 70% of us live in the rural communities and it's almost all undiagnosed. 90% of glaucoma subjects are potentially under threat of visual impairment because they're not diagnosed. And that's something that's really important. So if we look at 11.27 million that have glaucoma, 10 million are undiagnosed and unaware that they have glaucoma, and 3 million roughly have visual impairment, and 3.7 million have unilateral visual impairment due to glaucoma. So the problem of glaucoma continues to dog us, and we really don't know what to do. But let's say if we started to think of diagnosing glaucoma all across the country, and we took a village model, and we said that a village consists of roughly 2,500 people. And there are 500 people. That's 20% of the population over the age of 40. So there are three important criteria for diagnosing glaucoma. Let's say we take the vision, the intraocular pressure, and the optic disc. And if we had a small team of one or two people who examined 20 people over the age of 40 years in one day, that means in one year, one team would cover a population of 30,000 people over the age of 40 years. And then if you translated that all across the country, then we know that we have a mammoth task. It can be done, but it is a mammoth task, actually. And what about medical management? Now, this is the cost of the drugs. That's about 20 rupees per day. And we really need, I think, to go down to 3 rupees a day if we have to manage glaucoma in our country. And I think that's possible, actually. So I think that in terms of public health planning, there is a huge amount of things that we need to do. But I think it's possible when we combine grassroots workers with modern technology, mod modern mobile technology that is today available, then I think it is something that we can look forward to in the future. Thank you all very much for being here with us.